Lave Radio, transmitting to every corner of the galaxy. Welcome to Lave Radio. Greetings and welcome to Lave Radio. Greetings, Commanders. Greetings, Commanders. A show that talks about the universe of Elite and the development of the computer game Elite 4, known as Elite Dangerous. And the fantastic community that surrounds it. Broadcast from the Corrine Design Winder and hosted by a vending machine technician. A place of nonsense and innuendo for forum dads. A self-contained podcast two hours long. Transmitting to every corner of the galaxy. It's even louder than me. The hottest show this side of Dizzo. The name of the place. Lave Radio. Lave Radio. Lave Radio. Lave Radio. Greetings, Commanders, and welcome to episode 389 of Lave Radio, the show that likes to talk about the universe of Elite and the fantastic community that surrounds it. I'm your host, Commander Phoenix Defire, and joining me in the Orange Sidewinder Bar for this episode, we have our Head of Health and Safety, Commander Edelweiss. We've made it! I can't believe we made it! Yay! That was close. As everyone in the, in the, you know, behind the curtains in the stage will know. Just. 
by Just. the skin of our teeth. We also have our staff liaison officer, Commander Psykid. I don't know what you mean. It was smooth as butter. There were no problems whatsoever. Just like last week, it was fine. Absolutely fine. Nothing to worry about, no. And finally, we have our Inhuman Resources Director, Commander Shan. Hello. Hello. Um, now, if you wish, you can join us live. We're hanging out in game at Lave Station with Ben running around in open. Uh, uh, you'll probably find him in the Lave Station bar. Um, and also, if you can't get to us in game, you can join us in the Twitch chat channel, which you can access through laveradio.com live. Click on the live chat uh, and go to twitch.tv slash laveradio or, as usual, um, YouTube or Facebook and even Twitter now. So, you know, full social media. And Ben would like to, to jump in. Off you go. Either that or he was just leaning on his keyboard. I'm not quite so sure. No, it. I'm just talking to a microphone that's muted. We're not actually connected to Facebook at the moment. There are technical issues with the connection between Restream and Facebook and the fact that somebody who isn't you, me, Shan or Sai seems to have some form of I am Lave Radio on Facebook and we just we're just moderators for it. So when I try and connect to it, I, I go and say, well, I could restream you on Facebook as Ben, but nobody mm -hmm. wants that. No, so I... we, we, need, we need to find out who actually owns Facebook and then for us to tell us how we can all, we can all have access to it. Oh, uh, I see. Oh, but we are, we are, thankfully, and only just on Twitch, I believe. And we are definitely on YouTube because I can watch that without work saying, hang on, you're watching something that you shouldn't be looking at. Uh, which I get whenever I try and look at Twitch. Ah, well, um, who doesn't? <laughs> well, yeah, I was only looking at that Twitch OnlyFans thing once, and, you know, for some reason it's banned now. What, there's an OnlyFans section of... No, there isn't. There isn't. Oh, okay. You see, you though, I've, 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 I've taken your advice and not looked up what that is. I just point that out. Yeah. Oh, but you say there isn't, and yet just chatting on Twitch is remarkably similar to some of it. I, I take it you've done and done a lot of um, research on this then? Only once and only by accident. You put two fists forward right into it. <laughs> Where am I? <laughs> I? I have no idea, Ben. We're, ho we're oh, hoping that I, you I, I'm, I, I'm in Max Fleet Carrier. Now, that is the question, is where is Max Fleet Carrier? Or, I mean, some Max or Miggle's Fleet Carrier. Oh, right. Oh, I've got, to, yes, I've got to thank um, uh, Miggle's for last week, dropping me off near Akinar. It was very helpful. And then I just jumped straight back to where, uh, where I was because the station went on fire. Anyway, um, <laughs> yeah. So let's go around the team, see how they've been for the last week. We'll start with Commander Psykit. How have you been? I've been from... good. Melting computers. It, it, no, I don't know. It's just mm, I'm mm, mm, uh, I'm just keeping an eye on it. That's all. I'm just keeping an eye on it. It's been it's been a bit of an up and down week, honestly. Um, like Wednesday was a bit a bit fraught. We I had lots of plans for um, I had lots of lovely plans for the weekend because it was my birthday at the weekend, and then obviously it's also my sister's birthday at the weekend. Happy and then, um, thank you. And then, but on Wednesday, we had a um, a very, very unfortunate sudden death in the family. And oh. it it was really, really, sh really shit and not nice. And um, we, it kind of, it, it was a, it was a weird one for the, like the rest of the week. It was okay. It was okay. It's, it's more on my sister's side than it is on mine, but it was, it was still incredibly sad and not good. Like, I mean, a couple of us are, have had a couple of fraught weeks this week, but we also, um, like had a good birthday and, um, enjoyed ourselves, had a few drinks and I still got to spend time with like my family and the people who are closest to me. So it was really, it was really, um, it was, it was up and down, but the weekend was lovely and we've had lovely weather as well, which has been, been great to just be able to get out of my house a little bit, which I don't do very often given the nature of the things that I do. Um, in game, mostly buckyball. And you knew I was going to say that. Yeah, we did. Most, mostly buckyball stuff um, in Elite. 
Um, and not a lot of gameplay over the weekend because of aforementioned birthday and, and partaking in the old alcohol intake. But yeah, that was about it. Oh, that's good. Well, condolences to you and Katiana. Ketia, yeah, so, um, Katiana. <laughs> I'll get them right one of those days, but... <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, okay, Ben, about you. Uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah, my, my week has... Involves hanging around at the park a lot, basically. Um, it's I was I was home and both Friday night and Saturday, um, after the kids had karate, my kids basically decided, "Daddy, mummy's out of the pub, therefore you can take us to the park, can't you?" Uh, so we we did that, and then my five year old daughter somehow managed to pull all these teenagers who basically who 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 she wouldn't let go of and tried inviting them into our house for their tea and i'm like i'm sorry but you know we cannot invite four teenagers into the house for tea we can't do that we'll get arrested or worse um but my my daughter was well my daughter was very my daughter was very loving and she wouldn't let let go of these people uh, and then the, then at a pure random chance we bumped into them again on saturday uh, which is just weird. Um, yeah, I'm looking at it's the awkward conversation there, isn't it? Yes, it's like you know, I'm sorry, but I cannot invite them into. You know, I'm not really comfortable with them knowing where we live, and I'm really not comfortable inviting them into the house, especially when the wife's off at the pub. <laughs> um, it's just like yeah, there are yeah, and you, but how do you explain that to a five year old? You know, you can't. Um, so yeah, that, that that was that was fun. I mean, they were they were lovely kids, and you know, my daughter was having a whale of a time with them and things like that. Um, but that, that was that. Um, so apart from trying to avoid getting on any lists for things I I don't deserve, <laughs> um, I think that's really been you know I've I've not really done a heck of a lot else. Um, I was trying to play, well, possibly CQC or something like that with you yesterday, Colin, but, you know, that went belly up because of VR going belly up and yep. Ubisoft being wankers. Ubisoft. Yep, Ubisoft um, doing Ubisoft. Yeah. Uh, oh, and I, I watched en en Encanto and I've not been able to get some of that film's songs out of my head. Hey, Ben, quick question. We don't talk about Bruno. No, 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 no. Floors. <laughs> yes, floors. <laughs> I, that starts me off constantly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, um, Shan, um, how have you been? Um, I've had a week. Mm -hmm. Um, let me see. Uh, as, as I said last week, our six-month, uh, sorry, five-month-old kitten was taken to the Royal Veterinary Hospital on the Monday. Mm -hmm. And uh, we got twice daily updates, and the little mite was fighting back really hard, you know, seen bright, active, still weeing, but the, the, the values coming from the kidneys was very, very, very high, and they needed to keep treatment up to see if they'd go down. And on Friday, they halved from above 1600, where 140 is normal, but um, 1600, they dropped to 800. Um, but uh, the little mite was quite quiet uh, on Friday morning. And then my wife got the call that said um, they'd had a, a brain bleed and was fitting. And their, oh. recommendation, uh, and their recommendation was to um, put him down. So yeah, it's been a week. Um, yeah. So we're uh, currently going through the process. Of, well, it's a grieving process, really. But amongst all of that, it's trying to sort insurance out and you know that that whole nasty thing, really. And it's kind of it's a bit weird, really, because we we'd sort of like semi chosen the name name Calvin for it because the the older cat is Hobbs, you see, mm -hmm. and. Um, it sort of feel, feels like the name never had a chance to be known. 
and uh, uh, and Mr. Shan is very keen on you can't use Calvin because he's been taken, and you know it would just remind us of the cat. And yeah. I'm like, well, yeah. and I'm like, well, I didn't really, we didn't really have time. We'd only had it like six weeks. Um, but the the poor little mite really fought for everything he had, but uh, the damage was just too great. Yeah, always. Yeah, that's that is a um, yeah. It's just such a uh, a bad, just a one well, a simple oversight really, and that was that. Well, it was just as I say, it was lily pollen. Um, mm-hmm. That caused it, but we were, in a way, we try to look on the bright side because it could so easily, uh, our older cat hops could have so easily have groomed Calvin as well and got Lily poisoning as well. Yeah. So we're, kind, we're kind of feeling a bit, well, on, on, on the, we're trying to look on the bright side of it, but um, yeah, we've, uh, yeah, it's been, um, in one of those weeks on the upside because uh, uh, we've had we've had uh, we've had quite a lot of uh, bad news this week and I'm very sorry if you lost my kit I, I wasn't aware of that um, on the slight upside although it's purely my upside I suppose we had uh, 8.8 kilowatts of solar put in on Friday so we've been using more electric we've been generating more electric than we would know what to do with so um, to save it being exported to the grid and not getting any money for it, we've been going put every electrical appliance on to use. Oh, it right, I see. And I, I think yeah. our electric bill yesterday was one pound twenty eight for charging two electric cars and uh, showers. You know, I, thought, and everything. I thought if you put money into the grid, you actually got that money back. Is that not the case? Uh, you have to apply for it, and you have to go through all sorts of paperwork and hoops to get it. And because it was, I bet you do, yeah. We don't, we don't get any, any money back. But even yeah. then, the money you get back now is substantially less than what you used to. Mm. So it's 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 better to use it up yourself than export yeah. it. I can understand. So, and this is why you've got things like Tesla batteries and so on. I guess we're we're having we're having those those fitted in in a few weeks' time. We're just um. Like everywhere at the moment, it's stock problems everywhere yeah. across everything. So it'll be a couple of weeks before we get batteries. But to be fair, because we've had some bright weather and it's summertime, we don't need the batteries as much as we will do when it'll be winter time, and we have to rely on those for cheap electric, not the solar panels. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so it's in, yeah, more more electric stuff. Oh, I'm also trying to um, persuade Mrs. Shan. To get an e-scooter and take it for work. That's uh, using up even more electricity. Yes. Sounds like a plan. Right. Um. Just quickly go over what um I've been doing for the last week. Well, <laughs> although things have not been um as as down as both Shan and um uh Psychic, and I'm certainly going through this the stress grinder at the moment, having to deal with the passport office. Hey, that's fun, not. And also, the we've got a major release tomorrow, so a uh, little bit, little bit stressed about that. Um, in game, um, I have been playing practically non-stop Elite for the last week, ever since, ever since I got the computer upgraded. And uh, yeah, I have been rescuing people from burning stations in VR and just letting my jaw drop because it's the first time I've ever done that in VR and yeah, it is pretty good and also <coughs> heading out into the black a couple of streams over the weekend I have planned out my route for the buckyball but I've yet to do it <coughs> um, so yeah that that's something else I've got to do before the end of the week um, and apart from that I've just been mucking about in the game and having a good time which, uh, which is always good to see. So, um, on that more positive note, I think we'll um, we'll go straight into the development news because we've actually got some. Um, on the fourth of May, there was Frame Shift Live number seven, and they covered three or four major things that will be happening in the last year. Um, the first thing. <laughs> 
the first thing that we obviously got was news about um, console transfers. Well, console copies is really the best thing to uh, to say. So basically, um, we will be they'll be able to copy. <laughs> they're going to be uh, going to be copy, copying your um, console commander to the PC um, and you can still play your old copy but as of that moment they are two separate accounts so basically they won't talk to each other from that point on um, if you own ED on console you will now have ED uh, on PC they're going to give you Horizons for free um, they haven't told us when they're doing it um, and ARF has explained that some of the legality um, of ARCs transfers were a factor of this so um, effectively they can't transfer your ARCs and they can't transfer your fleet carrier so for both of those things if you want to transfer you or copy your command rather you've got to sell your use up your ARCs or um, get rid of your fleet carrier in order to you know have the money to rebuy them or transfer you the stuff that you need um arf also has confirmed that the horizon servers are not being shut off so the game's not being sunset it is being put into um into disco uh, into um into maintenance mode uh although we still will get um community calls and that kind of thing as long as it doesn't break in horizons um and this is a one-off process and there will be a time window for it and yeah that will be uh that will be coming um the next thing that they covered really was uh what they're doing with communication um now they explained that last wednesday with the um uh the messages about cancelling and recan uh, cancelling and putting things back on that was a one-off um the fact that it was on a wednesday is also a one-off it's always going to be on a tuesday on a thursday from now on however they are moving it to a fortnight fortnightly show it's still going to start at uh four in the afternoon which is you know that's four british summer time at the moment um they are still working out a framework for the rest of the year of the year there are twitch drops uh which everybody's been trying to accumulate they're going to be shrunk down so that everybody can still get the whole lot um so i'm just going to throw this one out to the team um obviously this this is a bit of a um we're still getting communication but it seems to be a bit of a um a cutback uh what do you guys what's your reaction to that then uh we'll start with i don't know ben if you ain't got anything to say, don't say it. Oh, that's fair. That's, that's sweet, <laughs> nice and short and sweet. Um, Chan? Um, it, we had a show last week where we kind of dreamed what would be said. So I think what was actually said met my expectations. What about the communication? Okay, fair enough. Um, and and psych it. I mean, um, I just worry for the people that are creating content based on this content and based how shit everything is. Um, what are they going to create content on now? I'm sorry. USA, USS makes shit up. I, I just mean, like we do every other day. I mean, why not? Um, I no, I. All joking aside. <laughs> All joking aside, if they can get more lads on and um, stuff too, or more more devs on, and actually give us like organize more structured content for that second hour, um, then I'm all for it. Um, if it's if it if they go back on on what they said about the content being driven. Um, if they go back on it and it's just the same show as it would have been weekly every other week, then it's it's kind of going against what Arthur is saying about wanting to have more quality and um, more quality content, more insight, things along those lines. If 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 they can, I will reserve judgment until they um start doing this fortnightly show with some folks on, and I I'd, I'd love to get 
that um, in, uh, insider info and also the um, the it will be, it's kind of like going everybody's saying that no one's working on elite well let us show you some of these folks who are working on elite i quite like that idea it's quite cool but um, yeah i'm i'm down for a fortnightly show absolutely oh that, that's fair enough um right uh well obviously the whole point of update of uh, frame shift 7 was basically to uh, <laughs> Uh, to show what they had planned for Elite Dangerous um, for the rest of the year. In fact, it was not only the rest of the year, it was also to cover early 2023. Um, we're going to summarize, I'll summarize it here and then we'll go into it in deep depth in the main section. Uh, but um, there are three updates due for this year. We've got update 12, which is coming this month. It involves a new mission variant, and there'll be stability and optimizations. In August, there will be narrative content, uh, followed by stability and optimization. Update 14, uh, they're hoping for in November, with a major narrative uh, point and um, stability so obviously they think that by November their optimization will be done uh, and then update 15 question mark um, key feature is being overhauled so um, effectively they have committed to a thing at least a year's worth of new content or a year's worth of content uh, coming in um, in the future. Uh, now, obviously, um, this got uh, a lot of reaction, and we'll be covering that in a minute. Uh, but yeah. Uh, and then finally, the rest of the day, uh, well, uh, later in the week, rather, there was the discovery scanner, which was put together by Zach, uh, by Zach on the Frontier forums, which effectively covered uh, exactly the same which we've just discussed. And then um, showed some nice pictures from Beetlejuice and, and company. So, uh, yeah, the it, it was nice to get some content um, to to talk about. It's uh, yeah, uh, we will will certainly be covering that. Um, the in-game events which have been happening this week. Well, um, on May the fourth, <laughs> um, Galnet had an interview with uh, Zachary Rackham, one of the the richest people there is in um, Elite Dangerous. Although, Shan, how close are you to him? Uh, sorry, I was just being interrupted by Shan. Close to who, sorry? Uh, well, Z uh, Zachary Rackham. You heard of him? Yeah. Yeah. Um, he, he's he's now claimed to be a, um, a, a trillionaire. Is that just small change to you? I couldn't possibly comment. Put it, put, it, put, it, put it like this, I have more credits in the bank than Russia, but less than America. <laughs> Is that like in-game or IRL, Shan? I'm not sure. Oh, I, I, I wish my uh, in-game balance transferred to uh, real real credits, but then I might have my CP yacht impounded, so maybe not. Yeah, well, it's, it's not exactly the same rich person as he is in game because he's giving all his money to Bloomin' Elon Musk for his batteries. Who? Elon Musk? I said Elon. Anyway, I'm on doing the... it to save money. You have to spend money to save money, Colin. <laughs> on the 5th of May, commanders supplied uh, Didio uh, by completing the community goal. So there's plenty of. Um, uh, Happy people in in the system of Didio, uh, thanks to uh, the community uh, the community goal, um, and to replace that, Professor Palin wants meta alloys. So the more meta alloys you get, the better these cargo racks are. Now these cargo racks are actually quite nice. Um, you've seen as the rewards we've um, we've got at the moment up to four tons of cargo rack, which basically can can handle. Um, corrosive elements but in this case the rewards are actually quite good 
Uh, does it tempt anybody to do this? No. Uh. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a witty retort. No. No. I'm fucking balling, mate. I don't. I don't know what's needed, but Thargoids are friends. I'm not going to shoot them. Yeah, but you might want to carry something for them. Not if it involves killing them. I don't. <laughs> I, I used to enjoy carrying. Um, Unknown probes and uh, UA bombing stuff. That was quite entertaining. Yeah, right. Well, um, on the 6th of May, the Marlinist colonies finally got their two new starports, thanks to Commander's efforts earlier in April. And, of course, Rackham has now um, achieved trillionaire status, um, which he's been boasting about. Um in-game itself, Operation Ida are still waiting for the Thargoids to be cleared before starting to haul and repair stations. And uh, according to Thargoid Watch, the anti-Xeno initiatives still have their three targets as HIP 38225, uh, Pacuman, and Didio. Even though Didio is... Um, yeah, Didio, um, the three major systems are still under Thargoid attack. Uh, and uh, yes, uh, I was in uh, the Imperial one over the weekend, and there was an awful lot of uh, anti Xeno initiative uh, activity and the gankers that came with them. So uh, yeah, that was that was fun to watch the general chat. Um, so that brings us um, to this time of the week. Score alert! Always, always chills me out that. Um, right, what has there doesn't seem to be anything that that came out. Um, in the store, they were highlighting the Cobra Mark Three Feral Gold, red and white, and the Apollo right, Apollo white, and also black and green. I think I've seen these ones before. I'm um, pretty sure I've seen them before too, Colin. Maybe not for the Cobra, but I think I have. Yeah, I quite like them actually, even if they are partially recycled. I, I think they're quite nice actually. I, I'm a big fan of the Cobra Mark Three anyway, but uh, mm. yeah, I, I I quite like them. I, I, not um, not hideous like some of the racing ones. So yeah, all right. Uh, I don't know. The Fear of Gold looks like it definitely is is leaning into sort of the rotting cheese look. I think. <laughs> what sort of cheese do you have? There's nothing like rotting cheese. Yeah. It, it does look like a little bit like um, those t-shirts you had with the smiley face on them. <laughs> what, the Rorschach, Rorschach yeah. ones? Yeah, yeah. That's what they need. They need a, one of those um, Rorschach ones which constantly move colour like Rorschach's face in Watchmen. That, that's what they really need to do. <laughs> And all of a sudden, I can hear the artists and the the coders going. Do you know how much that would be? So, so if if they did that, I wonder if they would um, you gauge people why whether they shot at you or not because they say it looked like my mother die. That's what makes me. Yeah, they'd have the these weird um little. <laughs> What's the first thing that comes into your mind when you see my cobra? <laughs> That sounds like a proposition, Colin. <laughs> anyway, um, I think from there, then we will uh, we'll take a short break and we'll come back with our reactions to um, uh, live update seven. Then, want to tour the frontier? 
Travel with Colmac Reeve and our new fleet of passenger Starliners. We've opened up the universe for a range of budgets. Option one, luxury. My husband and I like to travel in comfort. The new luxury cabins were like a home away from home. After all, one's home is a castle. Option two, first class. We'd saved up a bit for a really special trip. The first class cabins were like nothing we've travelled in before. Really luxurious. Option three, travel cabin. We would a trip with Cormac Reeves' monthly lotto. A travel cabin for two on a Starliner around the solar system. Once in a lifetime for us, simply amazing. Option four, basic accommodation. Me and my mates just wanted to hitch around the universe. It's so great that we have the option of getting a really cheap cabin to see the sights. It saved us loads. And for the budget conscious and slaves, we have our cheapest option yet. Well, I needed a... And we won't sell any of those frozen passengers into slavery, I promise. Colmac Reeves All Budget Tours, seeing the galaxy from luxury to freezing tubes. This is a public service announcement from the Fuel Rats. Please stop what you're doing and pay attention. If we can rescue you, we will. But you can help us help you by following these easy steps. 1. Fly 50 light seconds or so from the system's main star and drop out of supercruise. 2. Note down the current system and the nearest stellar body. 3. If you're on emergency life support, log out immediately. 4. Go to FuelRats.org and click Get Help. 5. Stay calm, hold your breath, and let our seasoned professionals do what they do best. The Fuel Rats. We have fuel, you don't. Any questions? Are you thinking of suing over Miss Soul Python Protection Insurance? Had an accident in an airlock or slipped in a space station cargo bay and thinking of suing for compensation? Well, don't. I tried to take my ship commander to court for making fertiliser out of my crewmates. Legal fees have left me with nothing, and now I'm hungry. All the time. At Watt and Brittany, we take small print very seriously. We have a massive team of lawyers just waiting to block your case and ramp up your legal costs. I wanted a simple, no win, no fee arrangement. My case got blown out of the water by Watt and Prittney and now I have to rent out my arse for hydrogen fuel. At Watt and Prittney we have a saying, if you don't want a beating, stay out of our court. I was savaged by a wild creature whilst fixing a vending machine. Can't I claim compensation? No you can't, because we have a massive team of lawyers and you're just someone who works for a living. Watt and Prittney, don't even think about it. You've flown ships at max speed. Mm. You've felt the power of the 30 megawatt mining laser. Mm. You've experienced the efficiency of the MB4 mining machine. Wow. But it leaves every hardcore miner with just one question. Why can't I get a shave that's that fast, close and efficient? Introducing the Saracen MB5 shaving drone. It's so smooth. Combining the power of a mining laser with the convenience of a drone. It's like every hair is targeted by a fighter and destroyed. Saracen's patented shaving drone attaches to your face at the start of the day. Leave it to do its work, and when you come back to check, your face is shaved. He's so smooth. It's like I'm mining my face. The Saracen MB5 shaving drone. Now I feel manly. Saracen shaving. Making shaving an unnecessary adventure. Oh, boy, space is cold in here. That commander has a cheek sitting up in his cosy and warm cockpit while we haul radioactives around his cargo bay. Oh, is it cold? I hadn't noticed. Oh, that's right. Why, you're not even shivering. Maybe it's because I picked up this North Coast cargo bay sweater. It keeps me warm and stylish. Say, that is a nice jumper. It's made from the finest Verex wool and handcrafted by novitiates in the underground monasteries of Van Manen's Star. Wow. 
Where can I get one? New North Coast Cargo Bay sweaters. Be the envy of your friends. Wow every lady from here to the Empire. Be warm and toasty even on the tenth planet of a dying star. Now on sale at Spark and Mensa. Better now? Better? Why, I feel so warm I'll probably never catch man flu again. Spark and Mensa. Because nothing says sexy like a neck-high jumper. And welcome back. Well, obviously, with the, the release of um, uh, the announcement of console console copies, I think is probably the better way to call it than rather than console transfers. And the plan for the future, we're, we're going to have something decent to talk about tonight. Um, so let, let's let's start off with the console transfers. Uh, we'll go around everybody uh, and and see what their initial reaction is. Um, let, let's start with uh, Psykit. I mean, is this is this what you were hoping to see for, from console cancel uh, console transfers? Yeah, I mean, it's it's a bit better than um what we had, wasn't it? Um, I I like to think that it has gone a fair amount of the way to abate a lot of the people who were expecting nothing and expecting them to come back with um with oh yeah no there's nothing we can do you're just going to transfer them the um the thing it, it's quite obvious yes 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 it should this should have been something that was in place when they initially made the announcement that console transfers were going um we're going to go ahead there is no denying that that um is the case but again it's for me like it's it's indicative of the pressure that the community team are putting on um or are putting on whoever is making these decisions about what they can say um so that they can they can try and appease the community that's that's the impression that i get um that said it's great stuff it's great stuff. There's there's nothing not to like. You get what what were you getting? You're getting a um a brand new account with all of the same details as your other account, as your console account, and you can continue playing playing both. It's fantastic, and I'm so glad that they've managed to get this, um, get this plan in place. Excellent. Okay. Um, Ben. Uh, as you're running around, uh, sorry to interrupt you. Um, right. I mean, well, I think Sai's actually just said everything that needs to be said. You know, it's about. It's actually better than I think I was dreading, which I, I was sort of. I got myself all set up for. We're terribly sorry, but there's nothing we can do due to reasons. Mm -hmm. And this wasn't that. And this is great. Um, yeah, as Sai said. Should have had it when they made the announcement, but you know we're getting it now. Uh, I do think that Frontier have done the good thing by saying, "Hey, if you got Elite on the Xbox, you now have Elite on the PC as well. Congratulations." Mm. Um, you know, I think that's in some respects it's the least they could do. In some respects, it's also the most they could do. You know, it's just it's the decent thing to do. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm dead chuffed with, with it. Yeah, I mean, um, it's they did say. I mean, obviously to do, to do with, um, with arcs and uh, for some reason fleet carriers, but arcs especially, you you kind of knew that that because it was a currency, and they you bought those things through the um, Xbox and the Sony store. You knew that was really where the sticking point was going to be. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, no, you you're right. It's um I feel like the thing with fleet carriers is more um there, there's something else that's um that's more technical. Mm. Um more technical than that. So I don't know I, I don't know fully, fully what it what it could mean. It's <clears throat> It might it might be potentially something to do with console fleet carriers just not having a flag against them that they're never gonna have interiors. That might be it, and it might just be easier for them to 
just create a brand new fleet carrier in um on um PC than it is to do a um than it is to do a just like a bra uh, like a, a transfer. Um mm. I, I'm I'm assuming it's something like that. But correct me if I'm wrong, if you decommission a, a fleet carrier, how much do you lose any money at all at the moment? I didn't think no, you did. You get, you get 100% of your money back. They they oh, did have go. Yeah, they they did have they did um change, this, yeah. yeah, they did change it because uh, there was an awful lot of uh you know, you decommission your your carrier after 6 months you only got half your value back right when they first released and that caused an absolute stink. Meanwhile, um Shan, your your opinion on copies or transfers um yeah i mean i'll start off by predicating that i think frontier need not have put the effort in the design for console transfers than they did do i mean morally yes they kind of had to but actually they kind of didn't if you see what i mean they could have just said well we do credit transfers and that's 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 what you're getting, but they uh, they could have done that. It wouldn't have been very popular, but that they could have done. Um, in, in in my day work though, I, I do have a setting uh, saying if it's not operational, it's aspirational. And we haven't got a date, so what we've got is a list of things they aspire to transfer across. And just when people get excited about console transfers, it's not actually in yet. So let's see what we end up with before we get amazingly excited about it. Um, the the all the arc stuff, I can kind of see how that would work, but it, it sort of feels like um, supermarket sweep for arc. You know, you've got thirty seconds to go around the arc store and buy everything you need, otherwise you'll lose it. Um, so you so you'll end up spending money on pat you don't need just because you have to spend the money. If you see what I mean, so. I'm hoping they find a better way around it than forcing console players to do the supermarket sweep of the in-game store. Well, I can't see them finding another way around that, to be honest. Uh, I mean, if the, you've bought those arcs via the PlayStation and the uh, and the Xbox store, there's legal ramifications, or there's legal. Um, oh, I, I don't know how to, how to legal difficulties in extracting the, the the value of those currencies out without Microsoft and Sony taking their cut. And I so think this just, is probably the easiest solution. Yeah, so just correct my thinking then, Colin. So when you spend, I don't know, 20 quid on ARCs through the Xbox or the PlayStation Store, yep. Microsoft get a cut of that, do they? They probably will do, yeah. So that would be the then legal bit, wouldn't it? Because if it all went to Frontier... Mm -hmm. No, if, if it all went to Frontier, I don't think there'd be a problem. Yeah, so some of it must then go to Microsoft or Sony mm -hmm. for every ARC you buy, which is interesting because, am I right in thinking, let's say, let's say you buy 4,000 ARCs, the price of 4,000 ARCs, is that the same on the PC version yes, as it is, it is on the... So if the, if your cut on the console version is going to Sony or Microsoft, mm -hmm. Frontier then gets less actual money because they've got the cut. The other people have got the cut, yeah. Yeah, that's right. So why don't they? So that means PC owners are getting ripped off them because we are paying more for arcs than that. Because yeah, uh, I see what I see what you mean. Yeah, Frontier. Well, Frontier again. You're getting the the same amount of arcs. The 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 actual you as a consumer still get the same amount of arcs. What's actually happening is that um, if you're a PC owner not on Steam, Frontier get all of your money. If you're on Steam, Steam gets some of that money. And if you're on Xbox and, and PlayStation, uh, Microsoft and Sony get some of your money. You as, your, you as an individual still end up with the same amount of arcs as everybody else. But Frontier get less money. Yeah, but Frontier get less money. You don't. You don't get less arcs, but Frontier get less money. Okay. Interestingly but, enough, that's actually the reason why I kept my main account and I didn't transfer it over to Steam because mm -hmm. I was like, well, 
screw you, Steam and Valve. I don't want you to take Frontier's money from them. You know, I'm not using your services for this anyway. Mm -hmm. So I'd rather just give 100% of my money to Frontier when I buy things off their store. Yeah, I mean, that that's the one thing that um, I've, I have actually spent money through the Steam store, uh, which means that, you know, Frontier have... Uh, I've had less money out of me for one of my commanders, but um, yeah, I think the vast majority of the arcs that I've spent has definitely been on my main commander. Um, there has been notes in the uh, the chat room that one of the reasons about the fleet carrier is because it's tied to the commander name, and because the commander name's not being transferred, it could be that they can't transfer, they can't guarantee the transfer of the um, fleet carrier that way. See, I get that. I, I get that because when they've done server merges in other MMOs, mm -hmm. um, if you have a competing name, you'll find your name has got like a number after it or something like that, and you're then given a chance to change it to something else. So the usually the work is that the, the the oldest character with the highest level, yeah, gets to keep the name. Yeah, I mean, I've got the same thing because there's a commander Phoenix to fire on the Xbox. And of course, there's my main commander, Phoenix to Fire. So if I wanted to transfer my Xbox commander over, which would give me four PC accounts of Elite Dangerous, um, I would have to probably choose a new name for that other commander. So, Ben. Yeah, I think I I think another reason is, you know, just like the fleet carrier is probably tied to your commander name, equally, you know, your fleet carrier is deposited at location you know station body position yeah. you cannot guarantee station body position is going to be free for when you do the server transfer and it's just going to enter into a whole ball lake of shit where's the nearest close place please which would just be a right ball lake to go off and and fix for hey. however many people they have to do yes obviously hey. it's fixable but it's yeah I think they should just put them in a random location in the galaxy. <laughs> yes, but you would. <laughs> I think I am in a random location in the galaxy. I think my son is... Um, he played Elite Dangerous without telling me and, my, and the shiny sidey that was I was trying to get to Colonia and I think, I think it, it took a detour probably into the nearest sun. <laughs> my son killed it by using a sun. Yeah, that's... Uh, so, um, overall, the console transfers, well, my opinion of the console transfers is probably this is the best they could have get. Um, it's, you know, it, it's a nice consolation prize, if you like. It's, it's the consolation go when you're 4-0 four, four down. Chris, can we play a rimshot sound or something like that for his consolation noises? Oh, ha, 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 yes. I didn't mean that. <laughs> That's why you didn't repeat it. Oh, no. Go on, Shan. Um, well, I've just got a uh, a question to us. Do we think the console transfers, if they go ahead as described, rather than cut down or whatever, it is, if they go ahead as described, do you think that would be sufficient for console owners to continue playing the game? Or will they have moved on, do we think, by the time they come out for whatever reason? It depends if they can afford the game. because Or, or a PC. Yeah, it depends if they can afford the hardware and whether or not they want to. Because, I mean, I've seen on the forums when you actually look through the uh, the forum threads, this has come across quite well. The reaction to this has come across quite well. There are there are console players saying, "Yep, um, we will be um, <laughs> we we will be transferring over. We're going to take advantage of this." Um, whether or not it's going to entice thousands of them to do it i don't know but i think i think we'll see a, a, at least a few hundred which is a, a good sign psych it yeah i've had a fair few people in my chat like basically saying that they were hanging on for that console news and um they wanted the ability to be able to transfer their console accounts to um to pc they wanted that that uh, ability they didn't want to start off i know some people who um when it was at first announced that it wasn't going to be um uh support 
it wasn't going to be um developed any further on console jumped ship straight away and bought an account so now they're gonna have two um but it there's i i feel like well the well this isn't going to um uh rectify the relationship with um a lot of commanders who instantly felt let down and put their games away and they're never going to touch it again those people who were hanging on and holding out for that like little bit of little bit of hope and that that little nugget of information um again like like you were saying Colin the information that I've seen has been incredibly incredibly positive yeah yeah Ben I was just thinking one of the things that I believe, not being an Xbox person, I don't know, but am I right in thinking you can do there's some kind of NVIDIA sync cloud computing thing that Xboxes can do? Yeah, well, I mean, effectively, you can yeah. as long you can yeah. run Odyssey on a PC on your on your local network and then stream it via the you know the the. No, I thought I thought there was a cloud sync. Um, yeah. and using NVIDIA's streaming services, which means you don't even need a PC. Oh, I felt I thought although I've never done this, I don't know I don't know anything about it. Um, but I that's that was the impression. If any of our Xbox commanders can tell me anything about this, I was under the impression that there that on the Xbox there are some cloud computing services that allow them to play Xbox a bit like was it Google Stadia and I'm sure I'm sure Nvidia's got something. I know I use Shadow, so I don't think Shadow has an Xbox client. GeForce Now? Could be well, G could be GeForce Now, yeah. That's Xbox has now. got a cloud gaming beta at the moment, which allows you to play console games on PC. But I don't know whether that works it's, the other way around. No, I, that's that's a different thing. Right. So this is using, you know, the Odyssey is running in the cloud. And then, and then, so you don't need to actually go off and buy a PC. You just need to have whatever this service is. And you can still play on your PC. And you can still play, sorry, on your Xbox. Right. Okay, well, I think that's something that we'll we'll look into, and if anybody knows about those kind of things, drop us a, a line at info at uh, livery.com. Paxina is saying GeForce they think does. But yeah, if anybody who is more knowledgeable and can say anything more than hearsay, please let me know. Because if you can do that, that's a more affordable solution, I suspect, than buying a whole new PC. Yeah, I mean that isn't that a bit like your shadow uh, box? Yeah, is it? yeah. I mean, I use my shadow box uh, all the time when I'm when I'm at home, and you know, I've played Elite on my tablet, or I'll play Red Dead Redemption on my tablet. Um, I don't like playing anything that involves mouse and keyboard, but that's mostly because I only use my yeah. I've just got this tiny little keyboard that work that um. You know, it's good enough, but I wouldn't want to game on it. Whereas gaming using a Xbox uh, One controller on my sh on on my shadow box on my tablet is great. You know, Red Dead Redemption is perfectly playable like that, for example, or so is GTA. Yeah, there's this thing called GeForce Now, but I don't see Elite Dangerous being on it. But uh, yeah, well, it's it's got games. That, mind you, that's got games like Cyberpunk on it, which is basically you'll be able to run your your game on any device. Which yeah, yeah, I know yeah. Shadow. I use Shadow because Shadow basically gives me a PC that's running a you know it's got a 1080 graphics mm -hmm. card in it, and it's a it's a half decent i5 and 16 gig of RAM, and it's a full virtual PC. And then I can just go off and install my Steam or whatever, and it's great. Oh, Caprica runs. Uh, Caprica is running missions. Uh, uses on uses uses Shadow as well. So hello, another Shadow person. I like. Um, but I know 
you know, I know Shadow is a full on cloud PC that is, you know, here is here is your PC running Windows 10 and go. Whereas GeForce Now is, I want to play Xbox. Sorry, I want to play Elite or GTA or whatever. And so long as that game is available on that service, you can play it. But because I don't use I don't use that, I've never used it because I use Shadow, and I don't think Shadow is available on Xbox. Right. Uh, well. Well, it's certainly a research project to look into for uh, for next week's show. Um, right, well, on to the main meat of, of the show. Well, really, meat. Well, yeah. um, the rest of the plan for the future was, uh, was released and talked about. We have three updates, and next year, one was... Key feature overhaul. Now, um, update 12, uh, they say they're doing a new mission or a new mission variant, stability and optimization. Well, first of all, let's just quickly go around everybody and get an idea about this, uh, This well, roadmap? Is that pointers? I'm not, I'm not sure how to describe it. Shan? Um. Well, I, I agreed with one thing in in which they said on the live stream in that um, not giving details over the narrative was important because they want us to be surprised and stuff like that. So I um, I mm. think that's I think I think that's that's a good move and I agree with that. Um, my questions then come into the fact is that there are nine bullet points on the post-it note map. Only two of those nine are actually yep. narrative. Mm -hmm. the other five are stability optimization which i would argue should be business as usual they should be doing that as part of the course of the game you know I, I, if they wanted to they could quite easily have said well this may update we will be focusing on reducing crash to discs and optimizing for i don't know amd cards whatever it is they could quite easily give us the fixes or what they're looking to achieve in a higher level of detail than just stability and optimization. And the same with the mission variant. It's, it, even if it's, I don't know, on-foot Thargoids or uh, anything like that, well, even if it's something like that, they can quite easily give us a summary like um, rescue hostages from hostile forces. That doesn't actually tell you anything about the mission, but mm. you, it kind of gets you, oh, I quite fancy that, I like that. It kind of gets an, it builds an expectation going. And, and I do really feel for the CMs because I know it's not the CMs who are told what to put this together. They're just the messages. So I really feel for them. But the whole, the whole, the thing that feeds the elite is dying meme mm. is people see not much detail. They see not much to look forward to, and they see nine point roadmaps. And their immediate thought is, "There's nothing going on. It, it's dead." So um, unless you give people something to at least hang their hats on, it's gonna it's gonna feed the elite is dying thing. So personally, I don't think Frontier did themselves any favors at all by putting this out. And in fact, it may well in some cases have made them made people even more skeptical. And I think that's a shame because they had a golden opportunity here to release information like other games companies do um to be able to settle nerves and stuff like that right so yeah i, I think they missed an opportunity here you don't think then the because the impression that i was getting was that uh, as f so far that year they hadn't announced a single thing nothing nothing new um apart from one mission variant which came with uh with the fleet carriers now, at this at that point before this came out, everybody said well, it's gone into maintenance mode. This says to me, this isn't maintenance mode. You see, if you look at the number of bullet points, I have to question that thought because there are there are five out of the nine bullet points that you could say, well, actually, they are business as usual. Well, not really, because basically, the, the point I was trying to get is people thought, right, that's it when. 
they're going to announce that the game's ended. But that's what that the the vast majority you 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 only have to go onto Reddit and and uh, in the forums and God help you if you went on blooming YouTube, there was sort of the the doom cloud was huge. Yeah, but and... I'm I'm kind of not categorizing the people. Who, I mean, there are people who who think unless they get an expansion pack every week, there's games in maintenance mode, and that's clearly uh, the one end of the spectrum. But verging, I would say, on the irrational to think that but you look at this and you do think are they putting the same amount of resources into it as as they as they should be you know and and it's it's a little things of doubt that start the thought process going so i do i think elite is dying not at all do i think it's in maintenance mode i don't know of course i don't i but i i do look at this and i do think well but look at that roadmap. Well, actually, I think I'll stop playing until November, and whatever the narrative is, I'll check it out, and then I'll give up playing until February next year. That's kind of what that makes me think of when I look at that roadmap, and, and that's unfortunate. Okay, and can we move on to um, uh, Ben? Yes. Uh, what, what, what's your opinions on this? Um, it's yeah, okay. <clears throat> It's not in maintenance mode, definitely. It's somebody. Oh, who's shooting? It's not me. Okay, that's fine. Um, I do think we could have used more information. Um, I think that this isn't the person I want. Um, I want to get myself in a safe place, sorry, while I'm, I'm actually putting my thoughts in order. No, 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 that's okay. It's all good, <clears throat> oh, it's all good yeah. Um, get yourself hidden in a spot somewhere. Th- yeah, I've just, I've, just gone, well, I've gone and found a corner, but somebody, I, I can see a red blob. I'm a bit scared. Are they coming for me? Um, I've got, I've managed to get myself completely and utterly lost now. Um, what were we asking again, Colin? Sorry. Colin was asking. I can't Colin, multitask. Colin was What's asking how you felt about the roadmap. Okay, yeah. So, could have, yeah, could have done more stuff. What we've got is okay. I think it was good enough to say the game is not dead. We are still doing stuff. I understand why Frontier don't want to show us everything. Um, Obviously, I'd have liked to see more. Um, I agree completely with Shan that basically the things that they have told us are, well, this is business as usual. You're not actually showing anything. You know, bug fixing and optimization is part of the course. It shouldn't, you know, that's not a feature. Um, but equally, I understand Frontier not wanting to say, well, in patch whatever, you're going to be getting this, that is going to be doing this to this storyline, which means we're going to have to add this feature, this feature, this feature, and a bag of chips. You, know, you don't want that. You, you know, Frontier don't want that. They've never played like that. Um... What I think Frontier could maybe do is actually take a page out of Marvel, especially uh, the teaser trailers that they go off and do, and just do, you know, here are some teaser... Yeah, almost release a teaser trailer for what is coming in the next year would be beautiful, I think. Um, Go Psychic. I feel like I feel I, I do I do get you. I'd love to see like little little like bits and pieces dropping in and or little like tiny hints on social media. Um it was I, I I really, really wish they hadn't called it a roadmap. Um I, I wish they could I wish they'd done something like 
that they just posted um as far as the future we're looking at three updates this year all of which will include um as usual um uh, stability and optimization because if they don't include it there will be someone going oh, oh, okay. oh, where's the stability and optimization you know that they're going to be there you <laughs> yeah. know that that person is going to be there um on or like with their with their microphone going why is that not there um but you're also going to um have the other side where people going well they didn't really need to include it um and like just to say okay we're looking at um a couple of new mission heights next year we're looking at a big overhaul of um one mechanic or, or like some core game mechanics and we've got mission um updates and narrative plans throughout the year that would have been great for me that would have been enough and um like oh uh, uh someone saying oh no well, um we've been filming something today that we're looking forward to getting out to you just something on those lines for me would have been so much more beneficial than um calling something a roadmap and making it that small that that yeah the lack of detail in it um and having that then opens them up to the opportunity of people going, oh, well, look at another um, game that does X, Y, and Z differently, and now I'm now I'm angry about it. That kind of thing. Do you know what I mean? So, you know exactly where you're coming from there. So, so I... just like being for being maybe a little less. I would have preferred it had they been a little more vague, maybe, but just said, like, maybe we've got update 12 coming in May. We're looking at two major updates further down the line. And one of them is a big core gameplay mechanic. And we're looking, we've been looking at narrative to work you all the way through the year. That would have, that would have, um, I, I agree. That would have said the me. same information, but presented it in a way that leaves Frontier less open for attack. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It, it's just um, calling it a calling it a roadmap is always going to get someone's back up, and it's always going to get a, like draw a comparison with other games, and yeah. just like cut out that middleman and not call it a roadmap. You know what I mean? Yep. Okay, back to Sean then. Yeah, I just listened to what, to what Ben uh, and Sai si, and Sai was saying. It seems they were almost on the same page, more or less. Um, yeah, I think one of the things. That, one of the things I have seen uh, said is, well, this is just Frontier's way of doing it. This is the Frontier has never been very good at communicating detail uh, back since the you know, days of yore. So this is just continuance. And for me, that's actually not a good thing because what they should be doing, in my in my opinion, is they should be looking what other games companies are doing, what works and what doesn't work, and adjusting their strategy according to what works, not sitting with Frontier, we know best, doesn't matter what anyone else does, we're doing what we're doing thing. They need to adapt to the expectations of the community and to the market. And my disappointment with this is they haven't. Hmm. Hang on, hang on, wait a second, just, just to come back on that. You're saying that they've not satisfied the community? Just no, I... No, no, I said, I, I said they need to, they need to, they need to look at what the expectations are and where the community is in general and adapt the message and the output to put people's minds at ease, not raise well, more questions. So that they need to look I, I at think, what the other I think Shan is basically doing. saying what you're saying, Shai. I, I just, in a roundabout way. Well, I yeah, just in feel, a Shan I way. Just feel, or, like, in a Shan way, he's doing that thing where he's talking like he represents about how everybody feels. And my personal experience is that I, I've, it's been generally generally well received where, yeah, it's it's been sparse. It's been generally well received um, in just from, from people who I have spoken to. And I, I mean, I would never again say that i am a voice for the whole community but um, i'm incre increasingly aware that colin hasn't had an opinion yet so my apologies yeah, it's colin. all right it, sorry Carl. i will i will just come yeah, I'm, I'm, i am waiting patiently for me to um uh unleash well i must admit initially i was um a little disappointed about obviously the lack of detail um one mission variant uh, narrative content uh, and and stability and optimizations yeah it it I must admit, I was hoping that they'd go into more detail on that. Obviously, if this update is coming in May, then they'll go into more detail about the May update, probably in the next live stream. Um, but 
uh, yeah, I, I was hoping for you know a little bit more details about you know whether or not they they are fixing anything else apart from Odyssey, such as you know the usual complaints about bugs that have been in the system for for years because they've stopped doing the issue tracker. Mostly because every as soon as they put the issue tracker up, everyone goes, "Oh, look, we're, they've not fixed tiling or whatever." Even though they said that, um, uh, I think I, I suspect that we will still probably get on foot Thargoids, and that will be the November update. Um, because the last time they said major narrative fixes, um, if you remember rightly, two two point four when the Thargoids did turn up. Um, there was an awful lot of content attached to that, even though they they mentioned hardly anything about it. And you know, I'm wanting a major. When when I look at the August update, I'm thinking something along the lines of probably an, another interstellar initiative or something like that. But in November, I'm thinking something a bit bigger. I just wish that they would, you know, they were able to expand on the missions that could bring the space part of the game and the on foot part of the game together a bit more because I have been really enjoying the massacre missions where they send out ships to kill you afterwards or the ones which um, basically you some you go to shoot someone at a, uh, a settlement and they run off to a ship and you've got to shoot the ship down in your own ship. I, I would love more of that and it did it, you know it didn't take that box what it did take however was this feeling or that they were going to close or put odyssey into maintenance mode because the, the you know you you can't go anywhere on youtube without getting one of these elite is dying videos um at, at the moment and this goes to prove that the frontier of elite committed till probably about March next year. Um, well, I'm hoping March next year. When they say early 2023, when they said early before, we expect in January, but it normally comes in March. So it looks like, you know, one update every three months for the next year. Um, that's a hell of a lot better than it was before, um, uh, before this was announced. I, I feel a lot more confident about the game. Uh, and I will probably be playing a lot more, partly because of the graphics card, because I know that this stuff is coming. Um, as far as I'm concerned, this uh, uh, I'm disappointed about some of the content, but I'm not disappointed about the fact that the game is still going to be worked on for the next year. Can you imagine anyone being disappointed about that, though? Oh, no, the game's oh, going to be worked on. Oh, fuck. I don't know. Being you, pedantic, you, you, Colin. You, you look at some of those YouTube videos. You know this wasn't good enough. This wasn't good enough. This was, um, this was, um, you know, not yeah. Frontier don't care. Uh, that's what that's what some of them say, and I I get sick and tired of that. I mean, I yeah, I like Shan. I am disappointed about the fact that you know they're not gone into much detail about stuff that's in there. But I am happy about the fact that I know that the, the game is going to continually be developed on for the next year or so. Um, being a bit pedantic. Yeah, being a bit pedantic. Oh, being it, pedantic, Shan, well, like really? Shan, it's great. It, well, the thing is, early 2023 is not the next year or so. It's the next... Anyway. Um, yeah, just to sort of come, just a bit of a comment on what Sai mentioned uh, about it. See, when, when I... When I look at this, I'm comparing against best practice in the industry. I said last week, I don't, I don't treat Frontier like any other, like a different games company. I look at them as if they are just another games company. So when I look at what the standard is, and when I see any company, it could be ArenaNet, it could be, I don't know, Funcom, it could be whoever, when they do things that aren't best practice, I think, hang on a minute, why didn't you do that? And yeah, I, I just, I just I, at a loss as to say, why didn't they go into the level of detail as 
the flight sim devs do, like ArenaNet did, or anything like that, there's nothing to stop them from doing that, apart from a pathological fear of giving detail. And uh, uh, Colin mentioned that you've got updates every three months. Well, if you look at stability and optimization as an update, we've had that for the last year anyway, and yet some people, and I'm not saying they're correct, but some people have viewed that as an elite is dying. And uh, I will just mention a sh quick shout out to Obsidian Ant, who did a brilliant uh, picture. I don't know if you saw it. It was like every single clickbait meme in a yeah. single picture, uh, which which I thought was was particularly funny. So uh, I enjoyed that. And I think Wotherspoon did a um, Galnet news version as well, didn't he? Yeah, what was that? Ten things you never knew about David Braben's jumpers. <laughs> Psych it. Well... You, I think best practices are really um, are like your your idea of a best practice is very, very different to another best practice. And before anybody uses a misogynistic term and saying that I am white white knighting for um, frontier, I'm absolutely not. I'm genuinely not. I guarantee you that I'm not. But I just I it's it's very clear that the from at least for me it was very clear that they wouldn't just not ready to share the information that they have um, at. Um, at, at, at those points, you know, um, at, at that particular time, the, it wasn't like a an operation to give as much information as I can. What I'm hoping for, and what they kind of alluded to with the with that having devs on and things along that that kind of thing, but will help the um, um, will help show what they've been working on, but with people who can actually talk more about the intricacies about what they've been working on. And rather than just getting like, hey, look at this trailer. Yeah, this is coming or things along those lines. Hey, look at this trailer. Now let's talk to the lad who's been doing some of the coding or working on this big um, overhaul of this core game mechanic. Let's let's actually deep dive into that that the that those are the things that that made me really excited for and that that sort of roadmap we don't want to give you any information because we don't want to get it we don't want to get it wrong and also we're a little bit scared to give you that information because what what if it doesn't come out the way we want it to it's easy to say oh there's just going to be a mission variant rather than being um oh we're going to do x y and z all right now and give you that information because that's like that thing where you're like, oh, after have given us so many promises and we're just they're just not going to be able to keep them and we're not going to believe them. Yeah, the thing is, they haven't <laughs> made promises. This, this is the thing that got me. When everybody was going on about the beginning of this, uh, when Odyssey released and they went, there weren't any ship interiors, they promised to ship interiors. They didn't. They said they designed the ships with interiors in mind for later down the line. But for some reason, a lot of people took um, took the instance that oh, that means that ship interiors. They've promised us ship interiors. It, it, it trying to get people's message, you know, trying to get the expectation right is is very difficult. Um, ben, back to the about the dev streams. Ben, unmute your microphone, Ben. Yeah, unmute my microphone again. Uh, I completely agree with Sai what, what she's saying. That I think it'd be so cool if, for sake of argument, we have right in update fifteen, we are going to be doing what Colin wants, and we're going to be doing more things that tie ground and space missions together. Mm -hmm. And to talk about that more, here's Dom Corner, who actually worked on the damn thing. And done that then the they have done that in the past, but I think mm. that'd be so cool if they you know, they get Dom or let's say for sake of argument, you know, maybe they're going to go off and redesign um, power play. You know, you go and you go and get the the. the... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I know I'm being a comedian, but you get the you get the designer who to explain. The goals behind the redesign of power play. Mm. Yeah, um, I mean that that'd be good. I mean, yeah. I mean, as far as looking at all this as uh, the the actual, well, 
you know, this, this isn't really a road map. It's more like the mini map you get in MMOs in the top left hand corner. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, just quickly, let's let's do a, a little bit of speculation. Um, what do you reckon the narrative will be for August? LC, you want to go first, Colin? That's probably the easiest. Well, me first. I, I, um, I can I can fill if you want, but if you want to go first, it's yeah, fine. you you go first. Then first you know, tell tell who who. Well, obviously, it's going to be the build up to November, so you're going to have a, a couple of missions on the way up to you know, um, bit like the old interstellar initiatives were with you know linked content, which. Uh, will lead into the big content reveal in November, or the, the big narrative um, phase in November. Now, I reckon that is going to have extra content, just like, you know, the uh, the, the, the space stations being attacked by Thargoids. I think that is what November's going to be. However, thinking about what the key feature overhaul is going to be, that's probably going to be engineering again isn't it they did mention that engineering was going to be over looked at but then again there are so many key features that we can think of that probably could do with an overhaul it could be any of them really mm. it could be the barman at the station so you can actually finally get a fucking drink <laughs> that's that's a key thing that's for a key you, feature for me damn right it is lovely um okay let, let's have someone else's idea. Psych it. You go. Hi. You go Hi. I have so many. I have so many thoughts. <laughs> um, okay. So. Okay. So I'm going to pitch this up to you. August. August narrative thing. New mission type. There's um some new biological things found, and you have to go with your little um Dyson um thingy Bob. What's it? And it goes. Oh, this Thargoid shit in this, and you go. Oh, really? Mm hmm. And then um, suddenly Salvation and Ramtar and um, Palin are all like, hmm, hmm, we would like some of that, please. And then suddenly there's some more Guardian shit that you can do. Suddenly there's a new Guardian thing. And you're like, hmm, this is interesting. And then November, I'm sorry, October, a big Halloween event where they reveal who the witch is. Oh, good. Very good. And then... November, shit goes down. Disasters. Everything um, goes completely tits up in the bubble. There's nonsense and shenanigans and uh, factions split up and other things happen, leading to core gameplay updates. BGS. <laughs> oh, yeah, I suppose that's a good point. Um, and somehow... Um, Leaving power play alone completely because it is dead and no one cares about it anymore. That's a you, that's a lie. That's a lie. I know a it's a lie. <laughs> you're a horrible person. And as as far as as Arissa says, that yeah, the emperor will have her revenge. <laughs> I had literally had someone message me about um, power play stuff today, and I was like, I don't know. <laughs> no, all you need to do is send power play queries my way, and I will answer them for you. How's that? <laughs> No, it was it was it was in regards to something someone in my faction were going to were doing or some um or some shit and I was like, No, no, we do not care enough to do any, anything to do with that. You have got the wrong guy. I'm sorry, <laughs> lads. But um yeah, I, I feel like there's a um I feel like this big core gameplay thing is gonna be something like intrinsic to a lot of players. Um I <laughs> I really, really, really don't think it's going to be power play. I'm really sorry to everybody who's really hoping that. I just can't see it being <laughs> a thing. But um, I, I saw, I saw a yeah, couple of people. Say it's it's not CQC people, either. I, it's definitely not CQC, Colin. <laughs> Let's face it; it's even less likely to be CQC than it is power play. But I did see a couple of people on the forums going, "Oh, it's um, it, it, oh, it might be power play. It's really exciting. And I was like, oh, mate, that ship has sailed. I'm so sorry. Uh, <laughs> I'm so sorry to get your hopes up like that. But I'd like to see, like, a cool, um, a cool, like, some core gameplay systems really, really overhauled and um, feel more 
feel, like feel more like you were fully making a difference and things things along those lines. I don't know how they how they would achieve it or how they'd even go about doing like that, but um, or or like maybe even just make instancing a little bit better or crime and punishment. Can you imagine? <laughs> Yeah, if we're crime pays and you can get punished for it, yeah, I don't, nice. I, don't, I don't know. And now, now we're in cuckoo land. Um, mm. But yeah, it, it. I think it's. I think it's really easy, it, um, easy to like go absolutely mental with speculation on it. And um, if people are speculating, it's also driving content and interest. So, I don't know. Yeah. I'm surprised oh, oh, that on. nobody's mentioned, you know, on on foot Thargoid stuff yet. To be honest, which. I have to. Remember, I, I thought I, I did. I thought we all had. I thought. I thought. I thought I did. Okay, I, thought I, 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 I missed. I, I missed. You just that weren't listening then. to me. I, I might have been in in read only in in yeah read only mode, but yeah, I, I was definitely taking the major narrative thing to be on foot Thargoid. Yep, that's what I said. Um, yeah, I, I, I think I, I they... didn't think you said said it explicitly, but I'm probably wrong. Okay, Shan. Yeah, I think regarding the new mission type. I mean, I've been thinking about this, and I tried to apply some science to it, which is the first I know. But if if you look at the types of quests there are, and then match them against the missions we have in game, I would suggest the missing ones from that list, in theory, should be the ones we're going to get. So kill quests, i.e. kill 10 rats. We've kind of got those, really, already, haven't we? We've got delivery quests, they are ship, I don't know, 10 tons of bio waste to late station, etc. Gathering quests where you have to get certain materials to go and get stuff. There's a couple we haven't got though. We haven't got escort quests yet. You know, we have to escort an NPC or something like that to an objective. And and we, we haven't got certainly in one in one chain a uh, combination quest where you have to engine yeah, get the materials build a weapon, you said weapon against a boss. So I would suggest out of those seven or so that have been um, listed as these are the types of quests you have, I would suggest escort quests would be the missing piece. Oh, escort quest. The one mission that I always hated in Wing Commander was escort missions. Because there was always... Uh... Yeah. <laughs> I think everyone always hates it, escort quests, to be honest. Yeah. Um, especially the ones where the, the NPC was like, I'm going to toddle off over here. And now I'm going to toddle off over here. Now I'm going to sniff these flowers. Oh my gosh, I'm being attacked by orcs. <laughs> I'm like, oh, geez, dude, will you just get a move on? But that would that would give you, if they were in a ship, for example, that would give you a reason to carry the healing lasers, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Healing limpets, that's what you need. Well, um, I, I think we've we've mostly covered our reaction to it. Um, I think it's an. Uh, I think we can summarize summarize it as a yay, but <laughs> um, a lot better than than other places. I would have said. Um, I've been collating a lot of uh, other reactions that have been going around. Uh, by other creators, and we've got Obsidian Ant, who's consciously welcomed the roadmap, but is disappointed with the content. That's pretty similar to to your opinion, isn't it, Shan? Yeah, as I say, I, I I'm optimistic that good things will come of it, but the way it was delivered and ha and how it, I don't know. Well, I've said my piece anyway, so I'm not going to go repeat yeah. it. But yeah, it probably does. Yeah, I think you were along the lines where Obsidian Ant was there, they're saying pretty much, yeah, I'm glad they, they've said something, but um, I'm not happy with what they've said. Um, Down to Earth Astronomy, unfortunately, has said that he now thinks Elite is the dying game. Uh, this is because he doesn't see anything in the roadmap that will entice people back. That's a little pessimistic, I would suggest. Mm -hmm. And that's um, coming from Shan. Yeah, my God, that says something. Um, Burp it, um, quite happy. Uh, they have they are happy that new comfort has been, content has been confirmed for the next year at least. 
So that that came across quite well. Uh, loose screws appear positive, um, but they are concerned about what again what seems to be the lack of content. Uh, Hutton Orbital, they're always happy, but that's because they have mugs, and we don't. Um, Any questions? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Uh, at the moment, Yamix has yet to, re to post a reaction, uh, and Ricardo Gaming is quite positive about the whole thing, um, which was a bit of a surprise. Oh no, it's not. Ricardo Gaming is a, is normally quite positive. It's um, uh, I think it's John GG, which was um, he turned around and went, "I can't believe it. They've done something right." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, has anybody looked over Reddit over this? Because um, I was. It, I don't know, it seems to be like a 45% yay, 55% nay, which I suppose for Reddit's all right. I I avoid I avoid Reddit. When things like this come out, I, I tend to avoid the forums and Reddit because I prefer to look at it and have my own view of it without it being distorted by rampaging white knights or rampaging doomongers. You know, I, I'd rather reach my own conclusions to it. Mm. Um, right. Well, it's, well yes. especially when you know, I don't know about you guys, but my own, my own, <clears throat> my own opinion about all this is is kind of complicated as well. I mean, it's not a simple yes, it's perfect, but it's not a simple doom and gloom, is it? No. No. Uh, I mean, to tell you the truth, I've seen a lot worse roadmaps, mostly to do yeah. with Sony Online Entertainment, but. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I've, seen, I've seen worse, I've seen better. Yeah. So, um, moving on from there, let's let's talk about what the community has been up to for the last week. Well, prepare yourself for your, your pink ship, because on the rocks, the Buckyball Racing Club's next race is in progress right now, and Psykit is, is the person in charge of it. I you? did the hosting. I did the thing. I have no time to check the results, so I'm just whacking them up and we're going to verify them next week. So get your things in. They might not count. <laughs> and that you've got to be certain and confident that you're putting in the right time. Otherwise, I'm docking your points, Sunshine. Now, it's a really fun race. Um, the equaliser is proving to be really interesting. Um, there's been lots of different types of ships entered. I'd love to see one of every ship entered, but I don't think that's going to happen because there's a lot of ships. But um, it's a it's a really fun race. Um, I want to get sub 40 so bad. Um, but 40 minutes in the Cobra is around around the time that a lot of people are looking at this it's kind of like if you pass 40 minutes you're you're doing really really well but it, it's a really it's a really fun race i really like it and it's been a lot of fun so far and we're only we're not even halfway through it's great yeah i i, I think it's great as well um i've got my regulation cobra ready to go it's just getting the time to do it so uh yeah um, moving on from there, uh, Commander Homburger has written a really good piece about his buckyball experience in which he does all the races. So we're going to include a link to that uh, that article in the show notes. Um, the Endurance Expedition is still running until the 12th of May, uh, and we are going to give you a, a link to their Twitter account so, so you can find out what they're up to. Um, the SFPA Eden's Gate is now in uh, fleet carrier is now in permanent placement in the Di Diarrhea Blue JT-F C25-0 system. So if you're in the deep black uh, and on your way to Beagle Point, consider stopping by to offload your car. Uh, your stellar cartography data and ensure it's safe its safety before continuing on. Um, I'm assuming, <laughs> I mean, are we going to be doing sort of remote fleet carrier adverts? <laughs> Not I think for that'd free. Be a good section. Not for free. <laughs> uh, Trip Omega now reaches, um, has is now at phase four and is still continuing until May the 11th. And Commander Britpact 
um, of course, still has the Elite on Foot uh, community event happening tournament starting on the 14th of May. So um, get your <laughs> uh, get your sniper rifle out for that one. I take it that's something that you're going to be running around with, uh, Psychic? Um, if I get the chance to get get th there's um like different different groups. There's a three versus three, um a one v one with grade one weapons and armor, um uh, and a one v one with grade five weapons and armor. I need to try and um source myself grade one stuff because I don't have that anymore because um um I've built it all up with uh on for engineering. So potentially. Tentative, yes. I've signed up for it, and we'll have to see how it goes. Excellent. Um, right. Well, moving on from there, we normally have our mostly clueless section. Um, well, command, we're going to actually use something from Commander Shan, of all people, um, who says, Do not be afraid to run away from combat. Ideally, you want to hie awake to another system, since... Uh, this is not affected by your opposition's gravity wake, but even a low wake might do in a pinch. One of the key skills between an okay pilot and a great pilot is knowing the tipping point between uh, the kill and being killed. Pushing that boundary is the prime reason for losing a ship in combat. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's a whole lot of techniques that can, you can use to, to evade someone, but I've always found that the high wake is probably the best way to go. Um, Do you want me to expand on that? Or yeah, that go, on, go on, go on, drop, drop your piloting hit, hints. Well, the, the high wake thing is, is self-evident, is self but part of it is in when you're in a, a multiple ship, fight, there's a point when you are incurring damage faster than you can inflict it and the skill is knowing that point before it happens and then being able to either run away or disengage because uh, there's a um, uh, there's a saying that a lot of pilots are actually killed in real life because when they lose control of a plane they think they can may get control of it back so they keep trying until it's too late same sort of thing. Right, I see. Um, ben? I'm just wondering, actually, does anyone have any hints or suggestions about the best way to do a high wake? Because, you know, I know whenever I'm been in a position where I'm, I need to run away now, I'm already running in a direction because that's the direction, you know, that's the direction that makes the most sense to get out of the 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 dang dirty pirates view the quickest, say. Mm -hmm. But then I go off and find that the the nearest system that I want to do a high wake for is on the arse or something like that. So I've got to go off and turn around again. And I'm like, is there is there a way that people actually go and do this as in you know i don't know i don't know if there's a is, um, is there a suggested way to run away yes there uh, is yes there sorry, is Colin. um the way that uh, i have been well not taught but the way that i've seen people do it is if you are being attacked by one single commander then basically you turn into them and do a straight head-on pass yeah. Um, and then as soon as you do the head on pass, that's, that's when you dump. What I, that's what I don't normally do. Yeah. Uh, and that's when you dump everything into engines and shields and make a run for it and hope they don't got, they haven't got Grom bombs. Because yeah. if there's one thing that, that will stop your, your escape will be a good, well placed Grom bomb. Yep. But how do you go and convert that into the actual highway can jump away to another system and safety? Well, I have this, it pre-programmed. Yeah, I mean that—that that is one of the things that I have been doing in power play for most of the time. If I if I feel that I'm going to need to escape, um, in power play, I've normally found that um, I'm able to low wake for most of the time just by using that technique. Because um, <laughs> if anybody has has ever seen me uh, <laughs> uh, in 
power play that I normally I'm on the wrong side, so they come after me. Um, so basically, I turn into them and then get out there as fast as I can because my ship ha is effectively engine heavy for, for its size. But as far as doing the high weight's concerned, it 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 really is as simple as, as making sure that you've got your shields up and by the time un unless they're in a really really well engineered ship they ain't going to turn on you the, the other thing to know um well there's, there's two ways if you're with someone they're in a wingman say i'm with i'm with ben i go right ben got two on us now you go in i'll get them and then when ben goes in you then run away. That's one way. The the the, the other more serious way of doing it the ben is the method. Is that what you're saying? Uh, the other more serious way of doing it is you've got your destination selected. You can engage jump drive, the friendship drive, when you're not aligned with the circle. So you can have your jump drive powering up. Then you um that then you can simply just boost as soon as you're lined up so you don't have to get your thing in the reticle and then power up the friendship drive you can have it primed and ready and as soon as you get the countdown you're then immune yeah i mean psychic you've got uh some advice for um uh, running, running away. away on foot i mean running away um is there's quite often times where if you're a mission running running and you end up having to accident you accidentally um piss off a whole um settlement let's say let's say hypothetically that might happen in some instance um i i found it's a lot easier it's obviously a lot easier to get them to a chokehold or something like that so if you can like get npcs and stuff to a chokehold i'm not talking about player characters because they will be able to see you on the mini map with your little um uh um um uh open mm -hmm. open triangle thing um but the best thing to do i found if i have a lot of people after me which does happen on the rare occasion when I'm not just not killing everybody. Um, if I have a lot of people after me, the easiest way to do it is either get get away from them, is either get as high as I possibly can and hide behind a, um, a, a barrel of some kind and then pick people off when they come to you or find a choke point, which is also really, really handy, especially if you've got lots of grenades. And also, don't be afraid if your shields go down, remember that you also have a shield grenade which you can pop down on the floor and it creates a little bubble. I'm still learning that and it's very fun. I forgot all about that. I really yeah. did. I forgot all about those shield grenades. Yeah, it's really easily done. Like the the amount of the amount of actually helpful backseating I get when it's like, oh, don't forget you've got those shield grenades. They're like, mm-hmm, yep, 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 yep. Um, so yeah, it's it's worth it's worth using them. And um, you can also use your own ship as well and just sort of like use the shield set on your ship if they're quite a way away and they're firing at you. Let Just let the shields on your ship take it. That I found really useful. But all of that is is tantamount to this, a similar thing of running away. Oh, you, you know the, the clapping of lights on, lights off uh -huh. on ships? I found out that those work on SRVs as well. Do they really? Oh, that's cool. Yeah, you you basically clap once and the, the the lights come on. Clap another time and the lights go brighter. And clap third time, lights go off. It's really nice. Um, ben, grenades. Yeah, I just wonder: is there a way to quickly say, okay, please throw a frag grenade, please throw a shield grenade, please throw an anti shield grenade? No, you have oh. to cycle through them. If, uh, if memory okay. serves, you have to cycle through them. I don't think there's a as hotkeys. Um, are there hotkeys for in oh. the individual grenade throwing? I'm sure there are, but um, I thought that I thought there was a hotkey for each individual grenade type, but I could. I don't, be wrong. I have to, there I don't is. Always have it. Was that a Quemin question? Was that there is? Okay. saying that there is. Um, I haven't. I haven't checked it. That might help. Actually, I might have a look and see. <laughs> Kremen's saying he's pretty sure there is. He's just DM'd me. I'm gonna. I'm genuinely gonna open a leak. Excellent. 
Right. Um, okay. As we're going to move on to the uh, any other business section, has anybody got any other business? Because I've got a few things. Um, I suppose. I mean, it's not really anyone else's business, but I'll be meeting up with uh, Vang Dion from the Hudson Truckers yesterday. Uh, so I met up with him briefly yesterday, and then I'll be meeting up for pizza tomorrow. Oh, excellent! Um, so that'll be fun, but it's nobody else's business. Yeah. Oh, uh, for the mug, yes. Yeah, for, for the mug. Oh, oh. right. Um, we do have uh, news about Lavecon because actually, one thing that we forgot to mention last week is that Lavecon tickets are now on sale. Um, so for the second week in July, it's, it's starting, I think, uh, <laughs> uh, tickets went on live at the, the that's it, HCS website. And uh, yeah, feel free if, if you're coming down. Uh, yeah, they, they, they came on sale on Wednesday. So May the 4th, <laughs> surprisingly enough. Uh, yeah, so it's the 6th. The, the weekend starting the 16th and 17th of July uh, for LaveCon in Milton Keynes. Um, yeah, um, any other business? Well, our good friend Grant Psychocarl Woodcott, um, he, uh, him of uh, Chief Bar Steward fame, uh, this Friday is doing a Eurovision sweepstakes stream where it's you can sign stream. up. What? It's not a stream. He's not doing a stream for the Eurovision sweepstakes, just to clarify. Oh, okay, then. He, he's just doing a sweepstakes for the Eurovision. His um, Eurovision stream is normally, like, in October. Ah. Um, but this is, like, a, a sweepstakey type thing. It's just a bit of fun um, and for bragging rights. He does it every time, with all the time with his family, but this time he's just, like, passing it on to you. Although they did do the first semi-finals tonight. So if you get a country that's already gone out, all sucks to be you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but it's gorge.me slash euro if you would like to be involved um, and I wholeheartedly uh, recommend it considering that everybody wasted me in Wreckfest last year last, last week <laughs> oh, dear. Um, also the, we, you may have noticed there's been a slight change uh, to our uh, broadcasting we have we're also including the dex legacy in our broadcast um uh cycle now it's um it's a, a sci-fi and an alternative world uh audio uh drama uh, and the soundtrack has been created by uh, our own alan stroud so um more episodes will be put onto our stream um as as things go round, um, I've yet to actually have a listen to it, but I've been told it's very good. It's been recommended by Wotherspoon, so it, I normally go with his recommendations. Um, and right, anybody else got anything before the shout outs? I do. I do. I I need go to I need to mention there's a um. Because we didn't mention it in the community corner because it's not been put in, in the community corner. Um, oh. um, the uh, Operation Warbooks Radio 7 thing is happening this weekend, raising money for Save the Children Ukraine. That is happening this weekend. Um, there's a lot of streamers, a lot of streamers involved. I am off, so I can't, I, I can't help. I'm on, I'm on holiday. On me holly bobs, but... Um, they, they, that is happening this this weekend. There's a lot of streamers. There's a lot of tweets that have gone out about it from all the streamers involved. Um, but yeah, go and go and check it out. There is um, it's uh, Tokuso and um, Commander Orange Phoenix, um, Operation Warbucks. Um, those folks are are doing some charity fundraising for Save the Children of Ukraine. Excellent. Um, we'll just like to say thanks to. Uh... Grippy Gecko for uh, putting a comment on uh, the last YouTube video. I mean, he, he sort of said uh, he can't help but feel that people who think uh, the job of CM is to manage any negative uh, talking in the community and keep us happy and invested in the game, but they're being asked to be make lemonade from lemons and not being given any sugar. I think that's a, an apt analogy there. Yeah, it's a decent, decent comment, I think. 
Yeah. Uh, and uh, also, I, th I think I'd like to. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Commander Beardless, um, who's who's actually joined us in the. I think he's trying to keep track of you, Ben, because he's, he's actually joined us live for the first time in about three hundred episodes. So. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, congratulations! Um, and he says he, that um, he really does like the show. <laughs> so, <laughs> give us a like and subscribe. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> um, can I also just say, Colin, I'm so sorry for just uh -oh. like um, taking over a little tiny bit. But can I also just say that I have an update based on the grenade choosing type. Okay. You can. There are individual key binds to choose each grenade now. Is, I don't, I'm not entirely sure whether that's just choosing the grenade and then you have there is a separate key to throw the grenade. My gut says case. that that's probably going to be the case, but it is there. It is something that you can do. Yes. So, so um, basically, yeah. there's a quick change of grenade selection. Yes, you've got you. They've actually given us loads of buttons. You've got dedicated select frag EMP or shield. Mm -hmm. You've also got next and previous buttons, and then as I said, there's also also the pro grenade button. So yeah. it is, you know, select your you can you can do select your select your grenade and then throw it. Obviously, um, I, 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 I don't believe you, Ben. I can't believe that there were possibly like lots of different options for keybinds in Elite. It just doesn't sound oh, like Elite. It's, it's weird. It's weird. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> I think I think uh, I think we've helped helped everybody enough now with our uh, with our hints and our and our. Shout outs. So, well, this is, that was another great, mostly clueless thing. You know, we did not know that you could select your grenade type. Now we does. Excellent. Yes, that's that's a that's yeah. a good point. It is. Right. Um, I think we'll we'll do the shout outs. Um, first of all, our sister station, Hutton Orbital Radio. It broadcasts on a Thursday at eight thirty. You can tune in at twitch.tv slash Hutton Orbital Truckers or if you just want the audio at radio.forthemuck.com. However, we do have one thing to mention to this is that we have to say that we have to announce the passing of Commander Thomason, otherwise known as Rolf, um, who departed for the stars unfortunately last Friday. He's a commander who was instrumental for the truckers winning Epsilon Indy and he has he's he is he's quite integrate he was quite integral to uh uh to the the team over at Hutton and uh, it's it's a real shame for him to go obviously so uh yes it's 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 been a little subdued over at, at Hutton Orbital and uh, they'll probably be going into it more detail there um for the discerning commander that likes a bit of cqc action there's also the cqc discord at discord me slash elite dangerous cqc we're also giving out shout outs to the following elite dangerous podcasts um, so there's Allograb AM, Canon Podcast, the Spanish Speakers, there are, is the Elita Cast. Uh, there's a Fatherhood cause, uh, Podcast, Flight Assist, Guard Frequency, Loose Screws, Squeaking Fuel, and System Chat. And uh, for those of you who like a literary discussion, there's also the Data Sleep Podcast that's supplied by kind of Station Commander Alan Stroud. Uh, following this, we have the Commander's Guide to the Galaxy from Galnet News Digests, Commander Wotherspoon and Commander Beef Jude. And well, thanks to everybody who's chipped in on the Twitch chat and the in-game commanders. Uh, and special thanks, of course, go to Commander Tokoso, Jay and Trax and Alan Stroud, who have created music for the show. And there was one last thing that struck me, was that... <laughs> During the live stream, there was this one moment where Bruce was talking away, really trying to get over his point quite well when Arthur came in with a witty comment that destroyed the flow of the show. And someone put in there, that's the look of someone like the host of Live Radio when he gets interrupted. <laughs> Bruce, I felt your pain. I don't know what you're talking about, Colin. <laughs> ah, so that's it for another episode of. So how are you feeling, Colin? You're right. 
<laughs> if you'd like to get in touch with the show, you can email info at laveradio.com. Hit us up at facebook.com slash laveradio. Tweet us at laveradio. Um, you can join our Discord server by going to discord.io slash laveradio. We, um, we have a TeamSpeak server where your commanders like to hang out and chat. You can find that at teamspeak.laveradio.com. And do get in touch if you've got any questions or if there's anything you'd like us to discuss in a future episode. Lave Radio is recorded live on a Tuesday evening at 8.30 and streamed out at laveradio.com slash live. So thanks, of course, to Ben. Thanks to Shan. And thanks to uh, Psykit. Um, <laughs> and special thanks, of course, goes to today's tech specialist, the Chris Mark IV. We need to put more reverb on that. <laughs> so until next time, fly safe. And if you can't do that, fly dangerous. Is your life like this? It's like having an orange insert in it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I need a safe one. I'm going to see the galaxy. No worries, guys. Hold the fort for two seconds. I'll be right back. Over the centuries, commanders have blazed their own trail, exploring, trading, running missions, engaging in combat. But a new breed of commander has recently sprung up, commanders who choose to spend their careers on foot. In this series, we follow the fortunes of one such commander and provide helpful hints to those who will follow in the Commander's Guide to the Galaxy. galaxy is a very, very big place. If you take all the places you've ever visited, even that trip to visit Uncle Rupert in Perth, Australia, and imagine trying to fit all those places inside the galaxy, you might be surprised to find that all those places would fit comfortably and with plenty of space left over. In fact, that space is really what you notice in the galaxy. There really is rather a lot of it. If God had been a little more sparing on the space, then everything would have been conveniently closer together, including Uncle Rupert, and we wouldn't have had to spend anything like as much time mucking around with supercruise and frameshift drives and sitting in metal tubes for hours at a time, only to find that your destination really isn't all that much different from home, except for the venomous snakes, the deadly spiders and the man-eating crocodiles, which are all things you might think you'd be better off without. And then there's Uncle Rupert, of course. But we don't talk about him. Not anymore. When you graduate from your basic training, which seems to involve powering up a base, stealing data and shooting a lot of bad guys, this huge galaxy has a lot of potential, but it is also a huge galaxy. Where to start?
That's the problem faced by Commander Tila Loren. Having had his first and only ride in a Cobra Mark IV and dumped unceremoniously at Chamberlain's Rest without a ship and determined to make his own way in the galaxy, the possibilities seemed endless. But it was news from the Brewer Corporation that caught Commander Loren's eye. On the 6th of January 3308, the Brewer Corporation announced that the string of megaships between the Bubble and Colonia, known as the Colonia Bridge, would be supplemented by six starports, offering a wide range of services to travellers and providing a home for the many new communities that the Corporation expected to spring up in those systems. This sounded perfect. Rather than being a tiny fish in a huge bubble, Commander Loren could be a big fish in a tiny pool, taking mercenary missions, helping out settlements, fighting against evil, and helping to make these remote starports better places. This was a challenge that Commander Loren was up to. This was the way forward. This was his destiny. Commander Loren would head out to the frontier worlds. The closest station was the Rice Station at Colonial Bridge 4 in Pru Yuk WO D B53 8, only a little over 1,000 light years outside the bubble. And that's where Commander Loren decided to go. After hitchhiking the thousand light years to the Rice Station and arriving in a green Asp Explorer piloted by a Commander Beetlejude, Commander Loren was excited to see what opportunities there'd be in this brand new system with its brand new starport suitable for pioneers. This would be proper trailblazing, not following in the footsteps of all those thousands of commanders in the bubble. First task, get a suit and take a mission. An Artemis suit seemed like a good choice, an opportunity to make some credits powering up settlements and transporting data and equipment. The mission givers seemed a bit taciturn. Perhaps they didn't want to give missions to such an inexperienced commander, so Loren headed over to the mission board and that's when the horrible reality struck. There were no missions, none. Nothing to do to earn credits. He headed over to Frontline Solutions. Perhaps being a gun for hire was the best bet to get set up. It wasn't. Nothing doing in mercenary circles in this system. Exploration wasn't an option without a ship, of course. So perhaps Loren should take an apex to somewhere else and try his luck there. And it was when he arrived at the Apex shuttle desk that he realised the problem. There was exactly one other place to go, and that was the Colonia Bridge megaship, Daniero Serenity. There were no surface bases, no outposts, no settlements. Brewer Corporation had been lying. The Colonia Bridge, or at least this part of it, was no good at all for making a living. Loren desperately searched the Apex departure board for shuttles to a neighbouring system, only to realise that there were no inhabited neighbouring systems. There was no way out. His lift, Commander Beetlejude, had disappeared the moment he disembarked. There were fleet carriers in the system, but without a ship, Commander Loren was unable to visit them. Apex had exactly one destination, and when you went there and found the mission boards equally bereft of content, there was only one place to go, and that was back here, Zerai Station. Commander Tila Loren, the on-foot commander, was trapped with no means of escape. The only option, taken reluctantly, was to borrow that sidewinder he'd been promised, do the flight training, and see what sort of mission he could make as a pilot out here in the boondocks of space. I mean, he could make a decent profit mining, couldn't he? Surely. Tune in next time for the next exciting adventure of the Commander's Guide to the Galaxy. Mm -hmm.